Hello and welcome to your practice. I'm Becky and today I'm going to take you through a series of seven poses to help us to release the psoas muscle. So our psoas muscle can get really tight. When it gets tight, it can feel like back pain, hip pain, leg pain, even shoulder pain. So what is the psoas? A little bit of anatomy. We have a psoas muscle on each side of the body. It attaches to the spine at T12 and then all of the lumbar in the back. It runs through the body deep inside through the pelvis. It rests on all our internal organs and on our diaphragm. And then it attaches to the inside of the femur bone, the, the main leg bone. So when we lift our leg, that is our psoas muscle helping us do that, along with hip flexors, but that's the psoas muscle working. So one on each side. It is the only muscle that connects the upper body to the lower body. So it's very strong. It reacts to our breath. It reacts to our flight and fight response. And it's, in most people, constantly stressed constantly tight. So we're going to take seven poses to release the psoas. And by the way, the word psoas is spelled P-S-O-A-S. -S. So the P is silent. It's pronounced psoas muscle. So that's a little bit of the psoas anatomy. And also I want to talk a little bit about our pelvis because we're going to do some poses down on the ground and we're going to balance um, on the mid sacrum. So if you think of your pelvis as a clock, with the tailbone being 12 o'clock, the waistline being six o'clock, the right hip bone or right side of the hips as three o'clock and the left side is nine o'clock, that's our pelvic clock. And when we wanna rest right on the middle of the sacrum, we'll find those bony points of the hips and we draw a line straight through and when our fingers meet, it should be a little bit below our belly button. And if we went straight back, through to our low back, that would be the mid sacrum. So what's the sacrum? The sacrum is the last five vertebrae of the spine and they fuse together as we age, they fuse together as we get older, as we get to be adults into a triangular shaped last part of the tailbone, last part of the spine. So the last five vertebrae, it's a kind of a flat bony, um, structure as they fuse together and that's called the sacrum and that's where we we will rest on that sacrum as we get down into the poses so for today's class you're going to need a yoga block and if you don't have a yoga block maybe a um a firm blanket or a firm towel but we're going to get started down on our backs so come all the way down onto the mat we're going to start with some pelvic tilts. So the knees are bent, knees stacked over the heels, feet hip width apart. And let's just rest with the arms at our side. And we're going to work on that sacrum, that pelvic clock uh, a little bit, and that low back. So we inhale, and we're going to press the tailbone down into the mat, and our waistline lifts up. So you could even fit your hand underneath there. And then exhale, we're gonna press our waistline down, tailbone curls up a little bit. So nice and slow, going back and forth between the waistline lifting and the waistline pressing down. So when we press the tailbone down, we're in this position, the waistline is lifted up, that is stretching the psoas muscle on each side. When we press the waistline down, we relax the belly. So don't tense up the belly here. When we press the waistline down and the tailbone lifts a little bit, we're releasing it. So most of the time it's too stretched, it's too tight. So when we press the tailbone down, think you're stretching it. You're stretching that psoas muscle on each side. And then when we press the waistline down, you're releasing it. You're letting it kind of contract like a rubber band going back into its relaxed, unstretched out shape. So just a few of these back and forth. It's really nice uh, first aid to uh, help with low back pain, hip pain, uh, SI joint pain, psoas stress. So just back and forth. Good. And then we're going to come to neutral. Now let's talk about that pelvic clock again and, and the, the midpoint of the sacrum. So as we're on our back, 
we're going to place our hands, our fingers on those hip bones, the pointy hip bones in the front, and then move across to the middle until the fingers touch. Should be a little bit below the belly button. And if you pressed straight down to the mat, that would be your middle of your sacrum. So the mid sacrum or the fulcrum point where we we're doing that pelvic tilt, right? When the tailbone presses down, that's one part of the tilt. When the waistline presses down, that's the other part of the tilt. But when we rest right in the middle, not the tailbone pressing down, not the waistline pressing down, that is mid sacrum. So sometimes we want to rest there. This next one we're gonna go into is gonna be a low bridge with a hip lift. And this is really nice to release and stretch out and relax the psoas muscle. So we're gonna take that little pelvic tilt to come into a low bridge. So we'll inhale, waistline lifts. Exhale, waistline presses down. Now lift your hips, lead with the hips and lift the hips to a low bridge pose. We're gonna lean the right knee in towards the left and then move the right knee away from you. As you move that right knee down towards the bottom edge of the mat, your right hip will lift. That's where we're gonna stay with this right hip lifted and the right thigh moving away from us. But even more importantly, we want that little pelvic tilt. So we wanna curl our tailbone up towards the ceiling and scoop our belly in and up. And we're gonna hold there for a breath and then come back to neutral. Keep that low lift of the bridge. We'll work the other side. The left knee is gonna lean in towards the right. The left knee moves away from you towards the bottom of the mat. That's gonna cause the left hip to lift. We wanna scoop that tailbone up towards the ceiling and then scoop the belly in and up, hold and breathe. And then come back to neutral. And we're going to lengthen the spine and lower the hips all the way down. Let's hug the knees into the chest and just roll side to side. So just roll out the whole back body. So we're going to go into that one more time just to make sure we've got all the little ingredients to that release. We're going to bring the feet down to the floor. So use your core, bring your feet down to the mat. They can always come down one at a time. The, the, the missing link in that pose is when we lift the hips and we stretch the knee away from us and lift that one side, if you don't push the tailbone or scoop that tailbone up towards the ceiling and then scoop the belly in and up, you're, list, you're missing that last little icing on the cake for this pose. So let's try it one more time. Knees are stacked over heels, feet hip width apart. We're gonna inhale, lift our waistline. Exhale, press the waistline down. Inhale, lift the hips up into a low bridge. Good, now we're gonna lean the right knee over to the left or towards the left knee. Move the left knee away from you towards the bottom of the mat. Your right hip will lift a little. So we don't wanna just stay here. We want that little extra piece to this pose. So we're gonna lift the tailbone up towards the ceiling and scoop the belly in and up and hold. You're gonna feel a really nice stretch in this right thigh, right quad. Good, and then release, relax that, come back to neutral low bridge. Then we're gonna do the other side. Left knee is gonna lean over to the right. We're gonna move the left knee away from us and that will cause this left hip to lift a little. And then that final little piece, curl the tailbone up towards the ceiling as you scoop and pull the belly in and up and breathe. Bring everything back to center. Exhale, lengthen the spine and lower down. Good, once the hips are down, hug the knees into the chest and roll side to side. So that works the, the psoas muscle, but definitely hip flexors and the thighs, those quadricep muscles. Good, bring the knees to center. Use your abdominals, don't let the back arch feet come down to the floor. The third pose that we're gonna do is a twist, a full kind of traction twist. So walk the feet a little bit away from the hips and we're gonna walk the feet out till the feet feel the outside edges of the mat. We're gonna inhale and as you exhale, let both knees fall over to the left. So the bottoms of the feet will lift off the mat 
And we're just going to hold here for a couple of breaths, just letting this right thigh, right uh, hip, right waist kind of stretch, feel, breathe, see what you're feeling. Inhale, bring the knees to center. Exhale, we're going to take the knees over to the right. So the bottoms of the feet lift up off the floor. Just relax here for a couple of breaths. Feel, see what's going on with the body. Good. And then we're going to inhale the knees back up. So we did that at first just to kind of feel right side, left side. So now we're going to go into this full twist with a little bit of that pelvic tilt and that scooping of the belly. All right. So we're going to inhale, exhale, let the knees fall over to the right. Good. Now we're going to scoop, we're going to lift that tailbone up, scoop the belly in and up. Stretch your right arm out to the side, out to the right. And as the knees are going to the left and your tailbone is lifting towards the ceiling, the belly's scooping in and up, we want to roll the right ribs down towards the floor. Hold here and breathe. Good. And then we're going to relax and release that. Bring the knees back up to center. Reposition those feet, get even. Inhale, with your exhale, let both knees fall over to the right. Now we want to lift the tailbone. So we're lifting the pubic bone, the tailbone up towards the ceiling. Scoop the belly in and up. Let your left arm stretch out to the side and roll the left rib cage down towards the floor a little bit. So keep lifting the tailbone, keep scooping the belly in and up, and keep breathing. So it's a big stretch in this whole left side, left hip here. Relax everything and bring the knees to center. Walk the feet in. Hug the knees into the chest and just roll side to side a couple times. So feel free to stop the video. Go ahead and bring the feet down to the mat. Feel free to stop the video in between so that you can practice these a couple times just to get the real feel for it. The next thing we're going to do, the fourth pose, is a bridge with a block. And the block, we're going to use it in three different settings. So grab your block. The settings are going to be the skinniest way, the most narrow way, and then the medium way, and then the widest way between the knees or thighs. So you're going to come down onto your back. We're going to start with the block in the most narrow setting between the knees or between the thighs. We're going to have the knees stacked over the heels, feet hip width apart, or uh, they're going to accommodate that the width of the block. Arms at your side. We're going to lift up into a bridge. We're not going to hold the bridge very long. So we're going to lift with doing that pelvic tilt. So inhale, waistline lifts. Exhale, waistline presses down. Inhale, we're going to lift the hips up, however high feels good for you, and then gently squeeze the block with the knees, with the thighs. We're going to come down with breath. So inhale, exhale, lengthen, and lower the spine down one vertebra at a time. Once you're down, we're going to take the block and turn it into the medium width. So the medium setting on the block. You might have to widen your feet just a bit. We lift with that breath, with that pelvic tilt. So we'll inhale, waistline lifts. Exhale, waistline presses down. Inhale, lead with the hips and lift up. However high feels good for you. And then gently squeeze the block with the knees or thighs. Let your belly stay soft and relaxed. Inhale, with your exhale, we're going to lengthen the spine and lower down one vertebra at a time. Now you're going to turn the block into the widest setting that will go. Your feet will have to widen a little bit. Inhale, waistline lifts. Exhale, waistline presses down. Inhale, lift the hips. Good. Gently squeeze the block with the thighs or knees, and the belly is soft and relaxed, scooping up a little bit. Inhale. With your exhale, lengthen. Come down nice and slow. Once your hips are down, we're going to turn the block back into that medium width. You might have to walk the feet, or you should walk the feet in just a bit. Inhale, waistline lifts. Exhale, waistline presses down. Inhale, lead with the hips and the tailbone and lift up. Gentle squeeze of the blocks, belly soft, 
belly relaxed. Inhale with your exhale, lengthen and lower down. Once you're down, turn the block into the most narrow setting. The skinniest setting will go. Feet probably need to walk in just a bit. Arms at your side. Inhale, waistline lifts. Exhale, waistline presses down. Inhale, lead with the hips. Lift up nice and slow. Gentle squeeze of the blocks. Belly soft, belly scooping in and up. Inhale, with your exhale, lengthen, lower down. One vertebra at a time. Once you're all the way down, you can set that block aside, hug the knees into the chest, and roll side to side. Just roll it out. So when we lift up into that bridge, we want the belly to stay soft and relaxed. If the belly puffs up, then that's the psoas getting a little stressed and a little bit tight. Bring your knees to center. Use your abdominals. Don't let the back lift. And we're going to exhale. Bring the feet down. Good. The fifth pose we're going to do is a leg lift and lower. And we're going to hold the opposite knee. So this is where we really want to make sure we're resting on that mid sacrum point. We don't want the tailbone tipping down. We don't want the waistline tipping down. The whole time the leg is lifting and lowering, we want to stay right on that mid sacrum where we drew that line from the hips to the middle and then pointing down towards the floor. So the first side we're going to do, we're going to lift and lower the right leg. We're going to hold the left knee. So interlace your fingers and bring them around that left knee. The left knee is going to be moving away from you, and you're going to be kind of pulling it in. So there's this resistance to the hands around the knee and the knee. The knee's moving away, and you're kind of pulling it in. So it's going to strengthen the arms, and it's going to help us stay really balanced on that mid-sacrum spot. So hands around that left knee. Stretch the right leg out on the mat. The right foot is flexed, so right toes are up towards the ceiling. Keep the left knee moving away from you. And here, I just want you to take a few of those pelvic tilts to feel that mid-sacrum point. So inhale, waistline lifts. Exhale, waistline presses down. Inhale, waistline lifts. Exhale, waistline presses down. One more, inhale, waistline lifts. Exhale, waistline presses down. Now, find that midpoint where the waistline's not pressing down and the tailbone's not tipping down to the floor. You're going to stay there on that mid sacrum, and you're also staying right and left. So we don't want to roll to the right or roll to the left. Keeping the right leg straight, resting on that mid sacrum, nice and slow. Inhale and lift your right leg up only as high as you can so that you stay balanced on that mid sacrum. Notice if the waistline wants to start to press down. And then exhale, we're going to lower the leg. Keep lengthening through that right heel. So right leg is long. We're going to take two more, nice and slow. Inhale, right leg lifts. Keep that left knee moving away from you. Only lift the right leg as high as you can so that you can stay rested on that mid sacrum. Exhale, we're going to lower. So it's controlled movement, slow movement. One more. Inhale, balance on that mid-sacrum, and lift your right leg. And exhale, you're going to lower your right leg. Don't let the pelvis tilt. Once that right leg is down, bend the right knee, and then bring the left foot down to the floor. I'm going to take it to the other side. So the right knee comes in. We wrap the hands around the back of that right knee. Right knee is trying to move away, and the hands are trying to pull it in. So we have this strength. We have this um, lever here, if you will, to keep us balanced. Stretch the left leg out on the mat, left toes up towards the ceiling. Let's find that mid-sacrum point. So inhale, waistline lifts. Exhale, waistline presses down. Inhale, waistline lifts. Exhale, waistline presses down. Inhale, waistline lifts. Exhale, waistline presses down. Now find that mid sacrum. Keep that right knee moving away from you. Balance right side, left side. So don't tilt to either side as well. Inhale, nice and slow. We lift that left leg up. Keep balancing on mid sacrum. Lift it only as high 
as you can rest on that mid sacrum. And then exhale, we're gonna lower the leg, keep balanced. Don't tilt the pelvis forward or back or side to side. Inhale, lift the left leg up. Keep the lever, keep that strength on that right knee, the right hands. Exhale, we're gonna lower the left leg down. One more time. Inhale, lift the left leg, balance on that mid sacrum. And exhale, we're gonna lower that leg down. Don't tilt the pelvis. Once that left leg is down, bend the knee, bring the foot to the floor, lower your right foot to the floor, and just uh, roll the hips a little side to side, just kind of massaging that low back and the sacrum. The sixth pose to reset and release the psoas muscle is constructive rest. So feet walk a little bit down towards the bottom of the mat, knees fall in towards each other, and walk the feet a little bit wide. So you adjust it to, to your suiting, right? So the knees fall and rest in on each other, feet a little wide, the legs relax, the thighs relax, the belly relaxes, arms at your side, palms up, and this just helps to open up that sacrum, open up that low back. It helps to let the hip flexors and the psoas muscles relax. Tuck the chin a bit and just a couple breaths here. We breathe and rest on that mid sacrum. So tailbone's not tipping down, waistline's not pressing down. We're just resting on that mid sacrum. Let the thighs relax. Let the belly be soft. Inhale, let the belly rise. Exhale, let the belly fall. This is a nice one. Anytime the back is tight or sore, it's a, just a good pose to let everything release. You can even do this at night when you get into bed. When you first get into bed, just take this constructive rest, and it just lets the whole lower back and hips release. Go ahead. Now we'll move into the seventh pose to release the psoas. Separate the knees apart. Walk the feet in a bit. Hug the knees into the chest. So we're going to keep the knees together, hands on the knees, and we're going to circle both knees in the same direction. So nice and slow, we're giving ourselves a little circular pressure point massage on the low back, on the hips, on that sacrum. So just nice and slow. And here's a good time to notice how are you feeling when the knees go to the right? When the knees come in, when the knees go to the left, when the knees move away, how and where are you feeling this movement? So it's nice and slow. It doesn't matter how large or small the circles are. And then let's take those circles in the opposite direction. Still going nice and slow and still noticing where and what you're feeling. If there's any tender spots or uh, parts that, that you're noticing, Stay with nice, big, slow breaths. I'm going to bring the knees to center. Don't let the back lift off off the mat. Use your core. Bring the feet down to the floor. One at a time, stretch the legs out. And just let the front of the hips open, back of the knees open. Arms at your side, palms up. Let everything relax and a few of those nice, slow belly breaths. Inhale, belly rises. Exhale, belly falls. So we're all done with this psoas release uh, class. Just let the back relax, hips relax, shoulders relax. Just take a couple moments to let everything stop for a moment. Let everything soften. Let the body receive all of the benefits of this short series for the psoas muscles. And then we'll bend the knees, feet on the floor. Roll over onto your side, either side, and come up nice and slow all the way up to sitting. Sit tall. I like to sit on a block. But maybe you sit on a pillow or a cushion, trying to have the hips higher than the knees. 
So that's another way to release that psoas. When those knees are way up like this, it's, it's compressing the psoas. If you sit in a chair a lot, that's not uh, good for the psoas. So walking, stretching, twisting, yoga, and um, breathing. So this, this psoas muscle rests so deep in our body that it senses our diaphragm. It, it senses it and it knows when we're not breathing right, it thinks that something is wrong. It thinks it's under threat. It thinks it has to get ready to fight or to run. And so we really have to work on those nice breaths to allow that psoas muscle to release. So sitting nice and tall, tailbone moves back slightly, heart lifts slightly, belly pulls in and up a little bit. Let that breath come all the way into the low belly. So we don't want just nose breathing or chest breathing. We want belly breathing. Throughout the day, whenever you can think about it, notice, am I breathing into my belly? Am I relaxing? Am I standing up enough? Am I walking enough? So just little things that we can do to release our psoas muscle. And I hope you enjoyed today's class. Namaste. I'll see you next time.